Hey guys, welcome to this special episode. And today we are talking about the coronavirus. And we have Tom Moorcroft, and he is an expert on coronavirus. He's a chronic infection expert, and he owns Origin of Health. So if you want to help me welcome Tom Moorcroft, welcome. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me. So let's jump right in and talk about what is the state of the coronavirus right now? Well, as a lot of people may know, it's it's we're getting bigger and bigger numbers every day. You know, there has been global spread. Um, one of the nice things that comes out of some of the increasing numbers actually is the reason, there's two reasons really the numbers are going up. One of them is that the virus is indeed spreading, but the other part is we're actually getting a lot better testing and we have more access to testing. And as we get more testing, we're gonna catch some more of the mild cases so I would expect our numbers to continue to increase, but it's going to kind of be that two-part reason, you know, because it is spreading, but also because we're actually picking up some of the true cases that have been around for a while. So I know that everyone's talking about washing your hands, washing your hands, but I think there is actually an art to washing your hands. And it's funny because I was out and I was watching someone kind of just rinse their hands. So and they weren't doing a very good job. And I was thinking, okay, let's do it. Let's actually mark this down for people. Like let's, let's really kind of explain to them what they need to do. Cause I've seen people where they just, they take the soap, they lather it, and then they're instantly washing it. Explain what you think is the best way for someone to wash their hands in detail. Yeah, and so I, I, I notice all the same things you do. We're, we're doing it way too quick. We're at haphazard. So the thing we have to think about is primarily our palms because these are the, and the tips of our fingers. These are the areas that we, even when we're trying our best, are touching our face and our eyes and other things. But the way we wash our hands is, you know, we wet our hands and then we get the soap on there. And once you get a good lather going, now you can start doing the 20 seconds. Now you can start singing happy birthday full out twice. You know, that's kind of like the timer method, you know, just singing it twice. But you really have to get your, your whole hand in the crevices, under the fingernails to be helpful. And what I'm also recommend, and then after you do that, um, that's when you wash your hands off with warm water. One of the okay, things- so Let me stop you right there, because I think this is where people are really getting kind of confused on this. So what I'm hearing you say is, when you put the soap on, you should be lathering like this, correct? Yeah. For 20 seconds. Not what, yeah. what I'm seeing people do is they're yeah. taking the soap, they go like this, and then they put it right under the water, and then they're leaving it under the water for 20 seconds. Am no. I right when I say you, you need to be scrubbing it for 20, for 20 seconds and getting under your, your fingernails. My fingernails, I had cut them completely down, and my fingernails grow so fast. But I think another big one is literally getting your nails down and just having no nails right now. Yeah, I think it's a great idea to cut them back. And I think the point is so well taken is you definitely need to be soaping for 20 seconds and then we're rinsing. Now, here's a place where a lot of people run into trouble, too, is you just touch the sink to turn it on. Now you're going to go touch the sink with your clean hand, but the sink is dirty. Oh, yes. So one of the things that we all learn how to do, like when you're in, sur you know, in surgery and residency and stuff is we either need to use like a clean towel or a disposable towel to turn the, the sink off. And so a lot of times that you'll see is we are going to waste a little extra water here, especially this is most important in public where you can't keep the sink clean in between as well and you don't know who's touched it. Go get your paper towels, dry your hands off, then, cl then turn off the sink if it's not on a timer. Same thing with the doors to the restroom in public. I mean, I'm washing my hands when I go in and on my way out because I don't know who's touched the door and I don't want to contaminate myself in public. So, and then when you're leaving, after you clean your hands, you can certainly use a paper towel to grab the door handle and go. Right. Now let's talk about that because how important is it to use a paper towel? Because obviously when you walk into a public restroom, a lot of times they are reducing the amount of times that they have paper towels and they have either air dryers air. or jet dryers. So how important do you think it is to actually use the paper towel? I think at this point, it, it, a lot of it has to do with the exposure risk. What is the concentration of the coronavirus in your area? And that's, and so you have to make a decision about that. I, you know, this is a place where the, you know, I've been telling people to, the secondary thing is, 
use our alcohol-based hand sanitizers, right? Uh, but I've been telling people to not use as much because the more you use it, the more the alcohol dries your hands out and breaks down that protective barrier. But this is a, a time where if you don't have access to that, it would be a good idea to use your alcohol-based hand sanitizer. The problem that we're running into is that the coronavirus is spread through respiratory droplets, which is just a fancy way of saying if you cough or sneeze, you know, all that moisture and, and, and droplets of water that come out and mucus that come out of your mouth, um, get on a table, you can touch it, you can put it on a door handle. And so studies have shown that um, the coronavirus can live for a few hours upwards of three or four days on a lot of these surfaces. So the harder the surface and the more plasticky it is, the longer it tends to, to be viable as an infectious organism. So that's really where we do need to do a little bit more if we're in our public areas. And if we're at home, you know, and we know who's around and we can clean these areas, you know, a couple, once or twice a day and not spaz out as much maybe as we might in public. Hey guys, I want you to know what I've been doing for my health that is absolutely transforming it. I'm taking massive amounts of vitamin C. Now, it's not just the regular vitamin C. This is 100% natural and it only contains natural sources, whole foods like amla berry, camu camu berry, uh, cherry. So it's literally just ground up fruits and massive amounts and it delivers 750% of your daily recommended vitamin C. So I literally double it and I have just seen so many benefits. So go to ChantelRayWay.com slash vitamin C to get yours today. So let's talk about homemade hand sanitizers. Now that all these people are loading up and taking all the hand sanitizer, right. you go on every shelf there, it's not there. So people are kind of coming up with creative ways. One, they're doing do-it-yourself hand sanitizers. And number two, they are making some hand sanitizers with vodka and alcohol. Have you heard about this? Uh, a little bit. I try to, I cringe a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that vodka. You got the right percentage, right? Yeah, vodka usually only contains 35 to 46 percent alcohol by volume. So that's not going to suffice to make it effective to fight coronavirus. So right. I'm, I'm all about if you want to make your own, and I have a great recipe for hand sanitizer that I can link people to that I can make for do-it-yourself. But talk about what is so important. What do you need to make sure of what the alcohol content needs to be if you are going to make it do, your, do it yourself? Right. Yeah, we really need to be focused on making sure that we have a 60% or greater alcohol content in order to truly inactivate the virus. Now, a lot of the DIY uh, recipes out there are for isopropyl alcohol um, at, you know, or vodka, <laughs> but 70% but is usually the low end of what we get. Then we have 91 and 99%. And so, you know, it's, as long as we're above that 60, we, we think we're in a good place. Got it. So let's talk a little bit about other things we can do. Obviously, hand washing is one, and I'm glad we talked about that. What are some other things that we can do for preventing it from spreading? Well, I think the big thing that we have to understand here is not being around other sick people, and people are obviously coughing and hacking and, and, and having fevers, is going to be a way to protect ourselves. And washing our hands is going to be a good way to protect ourselves. But when we distance ourselves, like we've been doing that social distancing and it's become a big thing now um, as this has spread, that's going to help protect us, but it's actually going to help protect a lot of other people more than just ourselves. And so when we comply with a lot of the requests that states and schools and local governments are making now to, to just spend some time at home with your family and not go out in public as much, one of the big reasons we're doing that is so that the spread is becoming exponential and we need to flatten that curve so that we're not necessarily going to stop more people from getting the virus but what we're going to do is slow down the spread so that the medical system can keep up because for you and I Chantel it's like we're very healthy you know we don't have some of these pre-existing medical conditions so we are likely to have very mild disease just like 80 85 percent of the people who get this the problem is the other people that what we're finding is there's a thing called asymptomatic viral shed, which is a fancy way of saying you and I feel fine. We've been exposed. We have the virus. And before we even get sick, we give it to somebody else. And so this is where we could unbeknowingly giving it, giving it to someone else. And one of the things where we're really concerned is children 
seem to not be getting this as much as others. And if they do, it's very mild overall. But if you take your kids over to see your parents who happen to be in their 70s and 80s and in a high risk group, you, it could be like a Trojan horse and you could actually go give them the virus they wouldn't have and everybody would appear healthy. So one of the most important ways to prevent the spread is to just give yourself some time away from others as, as nutty as that may sound at the moment. Right. And I think a crucial thing to understand is that it's the difference between the total number of people who might get sick and then total number of people who might get sick at the same time. Yes. So what I've heard is that our country only has 2.8 hospital beds per thousand people. And so like in Italy, they might have 3.2 hospital beds per thousand. China might have, you know, four per thousand. And so talk about that. Like, you know, there's only so many intensive care beds and so many ventilators. You know, what's going on with that and why why are they getting so panicked? Yeah, uh, the, the what I, you know, in the hospitals, I mean, all the ER docs I know and all the, all the boards I'm on with a bunch, you know, the chat groups with all these other colleagues across the country, they're seeing overwhelming numbers of people. And one of the really big concerns is like exact, you put it exactly like perfectly. It's the number of people per time, unit of time. And when we see the big spike, everybody's coming in. We, we run out of resources. People don't have enough gloves. They don't have enough masks to protect the healthcare worker, much less not give it to other people. We've already seen emergency room doctors who are on the front lines die of coronavirus. Um, you know, but one of the things is the mass hysteria has led lots of people flooding in and who may not need to be at the hospital. So one of the most important things are if you have some of the classic symptoms like fever, cough, shortness of breath, Unless you're having life-threatening shortness of breath, in which case call 911 right away, you need to take a deep breath, sit down on the couch and dial your doctor from home and ask them what to do. That we're, that a lot of doctors have set up outdoor testing approaches where you call, you make an appointment, you roll into the drive uh, to the parking lot, you call them again. They have somebody who has the proper equipment go out and do it and take care of you. So now we can have one or two people with proper equipment taking care of the coronavirus, you know, people, potentials, and then the other folks saving some of the, the equipment, taking care of people who don't have the symptoms of COVID-19. Um, and a lot of the doctors are just saying that, like, one of the other parts that's really important here is if you show up at the hospital, you might have just increased your risk of getting it when you didn't have it before. Because what we do, we put people in, um, like with tuberculosis, we'll put them in a negative pressure room, meaning there's like a vacuum on the room, and we filter that air. Well, we, you only have a couple of those per hospital at best because TB is not that common. And now it's like we've overrun that. We have floors that have people all over the place with COVID-19, and now you've just gone to a concentrated area. So the best thing is really to just stay at home and call for help before you actually drive somewhere. Hey guys, I have a free smoothie book that has over 20 recipes that are super unique, like broccoli bonanza, great green smoothie, and mojito madness, and so much more. They are really amazing and you're gonna love them. And the best part is it's totally free. So go to chantelrayway.com slash free recipe and you'll get the book and tons of other free recipes. Or just look in the show notes and click there. So let's talk about the masks real quick because you see different people, right? <laughs> you know and me so, in the mask. <laughs> so, you know, people are people are making homemade masks. It was so funny because one of my friends sent me a picture and she has a contractor working at her house and she had a picture of this guy and he was like, had this mask from, you know, here to here covered and it was just funny picture. So let's talk about what is reality and what is not when it comes to the masks. Right. So the mask is, is really should be saved for two people. One is a sick person who's coughing because that will help prevent them from giving it to others. And then for healthcare practitioners that have been fitted properly, the vast majority of the masks out there will not stop the spread of the virus. It's too small. It will go right through them. So the homemade mask, the dusk mask, 
if you're coughing, that will help, that will collect the big droplets that will hopefully not infect someone else, but it, it's not going to prevent you from getting the virus. Um, and, and it would give you potentially a false sense of security. And then the special masks that unfortunately now, because everyone went and bought them, they're actually under great short supply that we need to use in a hospital setting or a doctor's office need to actually be properly fit. And this mask is still too big. The filtration is not small enough for coronavirus, and it only will work about 50 to 60% of the time, even if somebody's got it fit properly. And when, when I remember like my, one of my first emergency room jobs, they, they take me to a room, they put it on, and then they put this huge plastic thing over my head and they shoot in this like pepper spray stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, and it, because the mask wasn't fit right. And then, so then they adjust it and get it on. And now I didn't breathe anything in, but it's really critical that most masks are not fit properly and they don't have the filtration to stop it. So my recommendation is if you're coughing, use a surgical mask or make a homemade one to help prevent other people from getting sick, like your caregiver. And other than that, leave all the masks that may still, that might be coming on the market to the healthcare providers, because they're the ones who know how to have it fit and know how to use it properly. Hey guys, I don't know about you, but if you are just feeling so tired throughout the day and just feeling restless at night, then I want you to try something called Energy Bits. Each package is has spirulina or chlorella algae. They're plant-based and they have zero sugar, 40 nutrients, five grams of protein. And so you are gonna feel great taking them. So go to energybits.com and then you'll get 20% off if you put the promo code Chantel. That's C-H-A-N-T-E-L. Yeah, so let's talk about touching your face. I saw this hysterical video of somebody in politics that she was talking about how important it was for you not to touch your face. And then she literally like flipped her paper over and then touched her mouth, you know, to kind of go like that and turn the page. So let's talk about, you know, I've heard that studies say that people are touching their face up to 16 times in an hour and they don't realize it oh, and yeah. that touching your face can increase the, you know, your risk of getting an infection so much more. So what are some things that you can do to prevent yourself from touching your face? Number one, and yeah. tie your hands behind how your back. Important is that? How <laughs> important is that, that you are not touching your, you know, your eyes and your nose and your mouth? The, the, the biggest thing here is to, minimize, well, to not touch your face with unwashed hands. So because the, the problem is if we're touching some of these other surfaces that may have come in contact with the coronavirus, you know, had the droplets on there, think about it. We're worried about respiratory droplets. So mucus secretions coming from your nose or mouth or potentially your eyes, we don't want them to come into your body through your nose, your mouth, or your eyes. So these are the areas we don't want to touch. And obviously, if I'm touching around my face and playing with my beard or scratching the side of my nose, it's getting closer and closer. So really, it's it's when you're out and about or if you might have been exposed, we really want to just make sure it's with, if we have to touch our face, because we all do, we all, you know, brush our teeth, make sure our eyelashes aren't in our eyeballs or whatever, we're just going to need to do it with washed hands. And that's really the big thing. And the problem is when you look at like little kids and stuff, they're doing this all day long. I mean, I, I have a bad habit of doing it. So I'm trying to sit on my hands, but it's hard to remember. So I go back to washing my hands more frequently. And just when you're out, you just have to be aware of it. You know, um, if you've touched things that you don't, you know, know where it's been and, or you haven't cleaned it yourself, then you have to just go wash your hands and I just remember this old adage I learned when I first started medicine. They said, if it's warm and wet and it doesn't belong to you, don't touch it. <laughs> and it's, it's pretty much what it is. It's like, I mean, you know, it's wet and it's not your, now, and that's the problem on these hard surfaces. You may not know, and it could just be a little sprinkle. I mean, I'm sure we've all sneezed into our hands and some days it's really obvious and other days, oh, that wasn't much. So just, you know, don't go crazy, but just, you know, clean the surfaces a little more and wash your hands before you start playing with your face. You know, one trick that I did was I put a little bit of essential oil on my hands and I just kind of rubbed it on here because anytime, you smell I, it. yeah, every time I was about to put my hands on my face, I would smell the essential oil and it would remind me, up, oh, I need to not wash my hands. So that's also another good tip 
just, you know. That's awesome. I'm going to do that right away. <laughs> yes. And, you know, what do you think about wearing gloves? Like just those like latex gloves when you're out? What is Wonderful question. So I, I, I did do some traveling right before this really blew up. And, you know, it was actually good because I heard no one coughing. There are very few travelers. Everybody was healthy. But everybody, had glo- a lot of people had gloves on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, so you just touched something that's infected. And now you kept your gloves on and you didn't do anything. And you touched something else. And you touched some, like the flight attendants all had gloves on. I'm like, that protects them as long as they don't touch themselves. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't really change If I've touched something that could potentially have it on there, whether it's my hand or the gloves. Now, if you have a high risk thing that you might be touching or you're going to clean something at an office where somebody sneezed or at home, yeah, you could put your gloves on, but then you have to take your gloves off properly. So you still have to wash your glove the way most people are using it. So it's kind of like a waste, basically. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, this has been amazing. You are so much fun and you are just so much wisdom. So thank you for sharing that with everyone. We really appreciate it. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Yeah, thanks. So I'm at um, originsofhealth.com. And if you add a slash coronavirus afterwards, I have a resource center there that keeps that you were updating it every day to let, you know, keep you up abreast of what's going on. And at the top of that page, I have um, a free download for folks that has my top three tips to avoid the coronavirus, a lot of what we've talked about, and my top five tips for immune boosting. So in the event you are exposed to the coronavirus, you've already started to bump up your immune function so you can stay healthier. And certainly over on Facebook, I'm at originsofhealth.com and Instagram is Dr. Tom Warcroft. Awesome. And if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at chantalrayway.com. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.